Hello, 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 and welcome to another coffee time. It's where we look at the news. We go to the Daily Mail website, so you don't have to. We do it all for you. We we spoon feed you the news. <sighs> BBC, the BBC, and the mystery of the BBC presenter who spent was it thirty five thousand pounds for explicit photos with a teenager who's now 20. Um, again, yeah, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Who knows? Who knows who it is? But um, nobody knows. Nobody knows who it is. No, Absolutely no one on Twitter knows who it is at all. Right? No one. Though I did notice on Twitter that you Edwards was trending. I checked out the, tre- the, the Twitter trend. And it put me right off dark side of the moon. But nobody knows who did it. Again, there's been a lot of debate. There's been a lot of what about on social media. What about this? What about that? Um, but the, the issue is that whoever, whoever it was, used taxpayer money to fund a crack, ta- a crack addict's addiction. That's, that's, that's the bottom line of it, which could be deemed as bringing the BBC into disrepute. And that means end of end of your contract. Off you go. Just saying, just saying. That's that's the thing. They can get him for that. That'd be in his contract or her contract. Because we don't know. We don't know who it is. Nobody knows who it is. Apparently, even Rishi Sunak doesn't know who it is. He was asked about it, and he, and yeah, and he claims he doesn't know. He doesn't know who it is. He obviously, he's obviously on threads and not on Twitter, you see. Um, yeah, here he is. He's saying, I don't know who it is. But he doesn't know anything, does he? He doesn't know. He does. what, does he have? what does he know? But yeah, nobody knows who it is. But it's funny because um, on Twitter, there was a great bit of what a battery. What a battery about the sun because it's a sun newspaper that's like pushing the story and um, people say oh the sun the same the same newspaper that published pictures of sam fox topless when she was 16 oh hypocrites that was that was way back in the early 80s that was the 1980s that was a different time when you could leave school at 15 get a job be married at 16 you know Start your family and have your own home before you've even hit 17. Different times. Different times now and everyone else. Youngsters today are in a, a per- perpetual state of adolescence, you know, surrounded by various trinkets from, you know, pop culture. Um, but yeah, a lot of what about A lot of what about out there. What about? And that's them like winning an argument. What about? What about it? What about it? Indeed. Um, what else have we got? Oh, this is uh, this is an odd, odd story from across the pond. This is the story of Casey Lacaz Lachney from Winfield in Louisiana, and she attended a music festival last year, and she sported a cropped T-shirt, study belt, and denim shorts. Here we are. This is the this is the outfit. This is the outfit. Uh, again, something for the dads. Here you go. That's the outfit she wore, and um, she was uh, she was charged with indecent exposure. Yeah, she was for wearing the outfit. Yeah, she was at the, a family festival, music festival. And approached by th- three female police officers who gave her a ticket for indecent exposure. And uh, she made a, a viral TikTok video about this, and it, it garnered 8 million views. Um, and a year later, so she's had this hanging over for a year, um, the charges have been dropped. Yeah, Winfield officials have agreed to drop the indecent exposure citation and expunge the incident off her record completely. And uh, Casey says this is a huge win. Of course, it is. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, it's absolutely yeah. And uh, yeah, it's actually they actually 
last year that the Winfield Police put out this giant tweet explaining why they did it. You see? It is, should be unlawful for any person to wear pants, trousers, sh shorts, skirts, dresses, or skorts. Skorts, is that like a spork? In any public place or places, right, which exposes undergarments, or intentionally expose any portion of the pubic area, cleft of the buttocks, or genitals. Well, I don't think any of that was on show, was it? I got a fit. I bet. I bet those three police officers were, uh, let's say, a little bit on the little bit on the chubby side. I bet they like. Let's just say they like the donuts. What do you reckon? I reckon they like the donuts. Uh, again, it's always, it's just, it's ridiculous. But we can see. We can always watch. See these men with their shorts on, bending over, arse crack exposed, can't we? We can always look at that. They never get fined. They never get citations for being offensive. There you go. Uh, more misery for Brits. Yes. As two-year fixed mortgage rates hit as high as 6.66%. I see what I did there. 666. It's the number. It's a beast. Um, yeah, apparently your mortgage is going to cost you. This is where you start paying in sweat. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's not going to get any better. Not going to get any better. Uh, what else have we got? Here we go. You're going to like this pol political news. This is quite cute here. Look, it's Joe Biden. He's up before his bedtime. He was enjoying a cup of tea with Dishy Rishi himself. Look at that. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? And and Joe's going, he's saying, I don't know where I am. True. They didn't know where he was. And um Yeah, he had some a, a photographer managed to capture some cue cards that Biden was holding in his hands, uh, to remind him what NATO was and who were the members and they, He's in charge of the nuclear button. Nuclear button. It's not good. Not good. Uh, here we go. This is, uh, I guess you'd call it, I don't know what you call this. Is it espionage? Uh, Ukraine Russian war news. There's many different, uh, many different ways we can <laughs> file this. Stanislav Rzitsky. Right, he was a he was a, a Russian submarine captain. Notice I said was past tense. He <clears throat> he set off a mis missile strike which slaughtered twenty seven Ukrainians. Right, here he is. Well, he won't be doing that anymore because he went jogging in the southern southern city of Russian city of Krasnodar on on Monday. When he was shot in the back and chest in what they reckon was a carefully planned hit. Um, yeah, then they reckon he was tracked. Um, yeah, using the fitness app, which revealed the naval officer's regular jogging route so they could kind of spy on him. Yeah, he, uh, Rosicki commanded the Black Sea Fleet submarine. Uh, which uh, sent caliber missile strikes on Ukrainian city of Vinnytsia nearly a year ago. And uh, let's look at one of his victims, shall we? And then we can't, we don't, we won't mourn him. We'll mourn this poor little girl, Lisa Dmitrieva, right? Who was four, right? We'll mourn her and we'll laugh that he got disposed of because he shared his <laughs> jogging route via a fitness app. Not very smart. Not very smart, these people, are they? Not very smart. So that's another one. We need What we need is we need another one bites of dust playing now. I can't do it because of copyright. Uh, copyright infringement. Meanwhile, last night on is it Channel 4, Supermarkets Unwrapped, the vegan aisle, um, punters were left uh, feeling a little bit green around the gills after they discovered... What many vegan products were made out of? Look, vegetable, textured vegetable protein, and flavoured to make it taste like uh, pork sausages. And everyone went, 
Nah, I'm good. Yeah. Just, just, look, just have the real pork sausage. Because, you know, piggies taste good. Meanwhile, we've got Met Police Officer news. It's a good, what, what is it? Was Is it a, a Met Police Officer commended for his bravery? Perhaps he's pictured helping an old lady across the road. No, this is the story of Detective Constable Darius Alexander, the 48-year-old, who was attached to the Roads and Transport Policing C Command, the RTPC, um, was spotted by his colleagues with his trousers down on Amsterdam on March 18th. He was probably just catching a breeze. He was probably feeling a little bit warm. And he thought, I'll get the old chap out, get some air to the old chap, because it was feeling warm. Uh, Alexander was off duty at the time, was arrested by his two colleagues before being convicted of the offence at Stratford Magistrates Court in June. So he's been, he's done, yeah. Remember, this is the guy you want to look out for. If you see him with his trousers around his ankles on the common, it's it's this fella. Um, on, on the heath. Um, so anyway, yeah, he he got done for it, and uh, yeah, he's uh, he's been dismissed from the force. They, the Met issued a statement saying Detective Constable Darius Alexander was found to have breached the standards of professional behaviour in relation to this dreadful conduct. Not off, and here is the picture of Hampstead Heath, but with how uh, Mr. Alexander with his trousers around his ankles. Like I said, just got a bit warm. I wonder what his defence was. Yeah. Yeah, at Alexander's court hearing, it was heard two officers spotted Alexander in the area when he was conducting a search linked to unrelated matter. Following his arrest, Alexander of Archway admitted to being a, and it's got it in quotes, homosexual man, before adding that the North London beauty spot was a well-known place in the LGBTQ HD uh, community for open sex or public sex. Yeah, but, you know, it's against the law, isn't it? And um, the court heard how the two officers spotted him through the bushes before observing him <laughs> acting suspiciously. One of the officers observed the defend this defendant to be, in quotes, masturbating and stroking it with his right hand. Stroking what? What? His police badge? We'll never know. We'll never know. And the officer then reportedly told his colleague to put that away, mate. Put it away. In an interview, Alexander's defence was he exposed himself because he believed the, the fellow, the, his fellow officer who was approaching him was, was gay and was attracted to him. <laughs> he liked the look of his helmet. He told the, the court in June he originates from Poland and he came to the UK because he thought it was a more civil place towards gay people. Yeah, but you just can't get it out on, on the Amstead Heath. Um, I'm so demonetised. Um, yeah, so uh, he was given a conditional discharge of six months, all that paid costs of £625 and a victim surcharge of £26 and kicked out the Met for being a right dirty boy. Dirty boy. They've got an app for that, haven't they? They've got an app for that. I don't need to do that. What else have we got? Uh, do, do, do. Oh, that crime news. That's some crime news. Let's go to Thailand. Oh, this is the story of Hans Peter Walter Mack. Here he is. He's looking pretty pleased with himself. Yeah. But police found him chopped into pieces and stuffed into a freezer in the crime ridden Sin City of Pattaya in eastern Thailand on Monday evening. Yeah. They reckon they'd used a chainsaw to chop into little bits. Yeah. Officers said that the real estate at Broker's head, torso and limbs had been severed and left in plastic bags in the chest freezer. Well, you don't want them to spoil. Very warm place over there. And at the scene was a chainsaw, ropes, a vacuum sealer, 
water and bottles. So they, they obviously vacuum sealed his remains in plastic bags to keep him fresh. Yeah, he went missing following with a, a meeting with a, a German realtor to discuss the sale of the pool villa and boxing stadium on July the 4th. Yeah. And uh, yeah, here's the police at the scene. I think there's a bit of him there. There's a bit of hands there. I don't know. It's not his hands. Could be his head. Oh, dear. Don't, just don't go to Thailand. Stay home. Stay home. Don't go there. But we do have a picture of uh, of his girlfriend. Let's have a let's see. Well, they say girlfriend and wife. They're not sure. Let's see. Do you think she might be involved? We don't know. She's probably perfectly innocent. It was probably a dodgy deal gone wrong. There you go. Same for the dads there. Don't go to Thailand. That's that. That's not good, is it? What else have we got? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, food news. Are you a bodybuilder? Do you take protein shakes? Well... The Food Standards Agency has issued a warning. Right, they're asking uh, that there be a recall of the one and a half kilo bags of Sai MX Nutrition Ultra Muscle Strawberry Flavor with a best before date of March the 20, 2025. This is being sold out of Home Bargains. <laughs> Do you get your protein shakes from Home Bargains? Well, apparently the protein powder contains potentially lethal amounts of caffeine. Yeah. If you take some, it could kill you. Here's a stock image of of a muscle-bound hunk settling down with his favourite protein shake. So stock image is perfectly safe. Nothing bad's going to happen to him. But yeah, uh, Tina Potter, who's head of uh, incidents at the FSA, said if you've purchased this product, do not take the risk of consuming it. High levels of caffeine can cause anxiety, sleep disorders, agitation, palpitations, diarrhoea, Restlessness and individuals with mental health condition can experience worse than psychosis. It's got everything. Uh, in this case, exceptionally high levels of caffeine could mean the consequences are even more severe and perhaps even fatal. And it's got a batch code number of W110429. There you go. It was a public service announcement there. Because I imagine that a lot of my viewers pump iron and take protein shakes. Many of them, though, have got a really strong right wrist. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Who wants to see the world's oldest bungalow? And it's up for sale. This could be... This, I want a bungalow. I want a bungalow, Mrs. Mrs. doesn't want me to have a bungalow. But, um, let's have a look at it. It's in Kent. This is, yeah, it's in the Kent coastal town of Birchington. And it was built... In 1874, let's have a little look at it. Oh yeah, it's quite nice. It's quite nice. I could see us living there. It's a six-bedroom bungalow. Plenty of place to put guitars, with a 60-foot hallway and a separate annex, so I can get away from you. Oh yeah, it looks very nice. We'll soon, we'll soon shit that up. We'll soon shit. Oh, yeah, all those records, all those Pink Floyd records, soon. I like the garden though. Imagine playing ball with the dog at the garden. And off she goes, over the fence. Whee! Into the sea, I believe. I say it's an impressive. It was yeah, the coastal bungalows in Birchton were originally built for the Victorian elite. And it really does lead you right down to the sea. Wow. Wowzers. So you order it and put, uh, put in an offer. It's a grade two listed property. Yeah. It's on a cliff edge. <laughs> Not sure about that. I do like the sun deck though. It's got a sun deck. Just think I could I could sunbathe naked on there. There you go. Let little Darren get some air. Without being arrested by the police, I might add. Um Yeah, I don't know. Was it? Have a guess. Go on then. Have a guess. They've dropped the price, right? They've dropped the price already. You, you having a guess at the price? 
This is, is she's throwing out prices at me now. But it's already been dropped by half a million. Yeah, it's on the market for one point five million pounds. There we go. I'll put an offer this afternoon. Blimey, I'll really. We got any funny ones? Nope. There's no, there's no funny stories today. Not really. All pretty serious. Okay, we've got some confusing signs. Okay, uh, this is originally appeared on board Panda, collated on there, stolen by the Daily Mail, and I'm going to steal it from them. Right? Confusing signs. Do you know which way you should go? Right lane must right left. Indeed, never a truer word has been said. Let's see what the next one is. Non-potable water, not fit for human consumption. Mmm, delish. No smoking in a designated smoking area. All right. <laughs> Make your mind up. You can, you can't. I think this one, you're just meant to kind of guess what the problem is. You just kind of look at it. It's more of, this is more an existential crisis sign, isn't it? You look at it and go, what's my life become? Caution, this sign has sharp edges. Do not touch the sharp edges of this sign. And then and then put underneath, also, the bridge is out ahead. I think that's a joke sign. I don't think that's real. Winter conditions, drive with cake. Absolutely, because if you get stuck in a snow drift, you're going to need some cake on you, aren't you? You need some cake. As long as it's not the, the drug cake. And it because that affects your Shatner's bassoon, doesn't it? Remember, do you remember that? There's, there's a deep dive reference for you. Do not enter, enter only. You can, you can't. Uh, what we've got here? <laughs> Sale 160, 159. Uh, that's not much of a sale, is it? Danger, no swimming. It's gonna be pretty hard. Mm, left, right again. And on this site in 1997, nothing happened, which is a bit like watching this video, in which nothing happened. There you go. Now, I suppose that was a little bit funny, wasn't it? Was it funny? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Here we go. This is uh, jail news, crime news. This is from the HMPPS. HMPPS. I am HAPPS. I know I am. I sure I am. I'm HAPPS. The HMPPS Offender Equalities Annual Report. Yay! We love a good report. Shows. That of the 168 legally male trans women prisoners, as men who think that they're women, in England and Wales, right, just six were in women's prisons and the rest were in men's jails. Oh, this is that's terrible. What a great inequality. A further 11 are in men's institutions legally change their gender through a gender recognition certificate. Yeah. But they dig, they dig deeper into the stats, right? And it says transgender women inmates also reported, exp reportedly expressed their resentment for men who are allegedly pretending to be trans, raising concerns that some male sex offenders are faking it. But how do you know who's real and who's not? How can you tell? What's real trans and what's fake trans? Does anybody know? But they have they have looked at the stats and boiled them down, and it's come out that, that um, male sex offenders are twice as likely to identify as trans women than any other prisoner. There you go. There you go. And that's that a surprise. Are you surprised by that? There you go. That was 
And there is also an HAPPS Transgender Advisory Board. There we go. Just there. It's a funny old world we live in, isn't it? It's a funny old world. How do we get here? Where do we get here? Uh, there's a viral TikTok from uh, user at language simp. What a great, what a great username. He's a simp, and basically, it's how English sounds to foreigners. And he basically says it sounds like fo like gibberish. Well, that's what that's what foreign languages sound like to us English. There's a reason why the internet's in English. So you all come around to our way of thinking. Yeah? Otherwise we don't want to be speaking loudly to you so you understand what we are saying. Learner the Englingo, isn't it? That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> but yeah, English is a lingua franca via the internet. So you know like German German used to be a lingua franca of of, um, of, fin of financial services back in the day. That's what that's what they told us in the eighties. And they advised us to learn German. They said, oh, if you want to get into finance and big business in banking, they all speak German. I don't know if that was true or not. Or they just wanted more kids to do German. And we thought we was all going to be rich. How did that work out? It didn't, did it? Didn't work out at all. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we go. We often give people promotions, and we, we the UK is known known for getting the right person for the job, aren't they? You know that. You know. You know that. Just look at George Osborne. Nobody reads that email that was sent out about George Osborne and his wedding. Burn your ears, it will. Burn your ears. Don't don't read it. I read it to the missus. And we was like, oh, saucy. George Osborne, saucy boy. But yeah, we promote the best people in this country We to make sure that every service and industry, you know, runs like a well-oiled machine. But anyway, this is unusual. Questions have been asked over the appointment of a new fire brigade chief. Yeah, um, uh, Nikki... Marzek, right, has been announced as the uh, as the boss of Northampton Fire and Rescue. Yeah, issues. She got the job. I'm I'm just presenting that with that comment. But there's been questions have been raised. Questions have been raised. Um. The position became free after the previous incumbent, Mark Jones, had to step down because he was recovering from an injury. And the appointment was made by the Police, Fire and Crime Commissioner, PFCC, Stephen Mould. Yeah. For whom Ms Marsick worked previously as a monitoring officer and head of paid staff, so he knew her. And, uh, yeah, she's now... Um, yeah, she, so she's got, the, uh, she's got this big job, but... But Adam Taylor of the Fire Brigade Union says this is highly unusual as she has never worked in the fire sector and ha she has no zero experience. She doesn't even know what a fire engine looks like. I'm joking, she might do. But yes, yeah, so questions have been raised as they've got a new chief who has zero experience of the service. I'm sure it will be fine. It will be fine. Um, she was also previously director of early intervention of the Police and Crime Commissioner for Northamptonshire on a salary between seventy six thousand and eighty one thousand pounds a year. That's not bad going, is it? It's not bad going. She's she's a high flyer. She's a high flyer. So there you go. Yeah, and a lot of union people are asking because you know I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. It'll be fine. We're not going to hear anything bad happen about that in the future nothing is going to happen are you having a bad day not as bad as this fella uh, 
This is in Broadstairs in Kent. Um, can you imagine? Uh, you, you've been out. I don't know. Maybe you've been out for the day, and you come back and find yes, <laughs> they've tarmacked the road. But because you didn't move your car, they've surrounded you with some lovely bollards there. You know, you've been fenced in with a, an empty patch of road underneath you. Yeah. Uh, oh, Damerel Wherry Easterbrook. You knew a Damerel, didn't you? Is it her? Mrs. Small world if it is. Damerel from Broadstairs. You went there. Broadstairs, remember? Um, she was walking with her son to the library when she spotted it on Saturday. She said the car stood out like a sore thumb and the cones were everywhere. She took the picture. Um... Clearly, the owner, the owner hadn't moved the car in time for the resurfacing. The workers just went around it. <laughs> um, and this uh, this went this caught fire a bit on social media, and people were monitoring the situation. And somebody said that uh, she sheepishly moved it today. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> it's the cone of shame, literally, isn't it? Cone of shame. But I wonder if it's your Damerel that you knew. What else have we got? Mind you, I think I've done enough. I think I've done enough. I do have a couple of animal stories. I do. I just gotta find the first one. Because it was up the it was up the page. Where's it gone? It was here a minute ago. Whoops. Where's it gone? No, that ain't it. Oh god, I make myself feel giddy. Scrolling through the pictures. But there was a there was a good here it is. This is a TikTok video. Right. This is uh, Roger the Cat, who's a confident little feline. Feline fellow. Here he is. He's going to the boat and he thinks I can make that jump. I can make that jump, no problem. Whee! Yeah, but don't worry. Roger was fine. He can swim, and they got on. They got on the boat just fine. So yeah, it's a new. That's a viral video on the TikToks. But we're going to go to South Korea now. Um, this is um, uh, the this is the Everland theme park near Seoul, where a panda giant panda gave birth to twins and here she is being a proud mother looking after the babies oh look at them oh oh wow yeah there you go panda life yeah the first giant panda twins to be born in the country in South Korea <coughs> the the cubs, both female, were born at the Everland theme park near Sal on Friday. Mother, I bow, um, birthed two healthy cubs. Oh, here she is. Oh, look at the little thing. Look at it. It's tiny. And they grow into those giant pandas. It's amazing. And they're so gentle. Oh, so gentle. A mother's love. There you go. There she is with the twins. And I think that will do for today. That was today's news. Let's see if there's anybody in. Nine people in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not bad, I suppose. It'll have to. Do. It'll just have to do. Uh, Gareth Sims is at home. Ren says, "I've been to Winfield before, or Winfield before. Oh, well, you've been there. Was you wearing short shorts?" Ren like short shorts, or is it Zorts? Like Zorts, I, I, I can't remember. Or is it Spokes? I can never remember. Fasano says, "How's it going?" I'm limping along. Andrew says, "I'm in today." Vegans never look very healthy to me. Should we do the joke? How do you know if someone's a vegan? Don't worry, they'll soon tell you. Um, Oaken Oaken Shield says, "Good afternoon." Oh, yes, I have coffee. Good. For someone says, Amsterdam Heath looks very nice. It is when you haven't got half-naked policemen running around. Imagine Yakety Sacks. 
that's the Benny Hill music for those of you who are uncultured yobs. Uh, runs in, he says, hi. Hi, Clive. Andrew says, Darren, you could build your new recording studio. Yeah, I could, couldn't I? I could, but not for that money. Mrs. won't let me. Fasano says, does the vacuum seal keep the remains from smelling? Don't go to Thailand. Well, not only did they vacuum seal him, but they also froze him as well. I think, I think they'll just keep, they wanted to keep him in pristine condition. I don't know, I've never heard of that. I've never heard of vacuum sealing it and freeze. I've never, you know, freezing, yeah, never vacuum sealing. G-Man's in. G-Man. He says, oh, Paul, he's good with you. Ah, I'm not too bad. I'm still alive. Oakenshaw says, there is no other way to drive, but with cake, exactly. Gareth says, brass eye. You got it. Uh, Andrew says, no swimming with the crocodiles, indeed. Dog cam. No, you can't do dog cam. Dog cam. Dog's asleep, actually, with her tongue right out. But I can't do dog cam, because one, one, it's not connected, and two, there's guitars. As far as the eye can see. As far as the eye can see. Not, uh, for someone who says it'll be fine. It'll be fine. That can be a good catchphrase. It'll be fine. And Missing Remote jumps in with Panda Panda. Exactly. Panda Panda. Avaganda. It's a bit like winner winner chicken dinner. Let's get that one. Let's get that one <laughs> running, shall we? Oh dear. Anyway, killing the channel, and I am uh, one video at a time. We want more Pink Floyd unboxings. <laughs> we want more music reviews that nobody watches. I can do that. I can do that. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we'll do this all again soon. Hopefully, the news will be better. You know, you know, you know, you've got to drink out. Ta ta.